Hi, it's Mayor Walter Senzik, and this is another episode of Our Home with Mayor Senzik. I want to thank you for taking the time to join us on the show. It's November. The calendars are changing. We're heading into winter. We hope you're enjoying all that we have to offer. And just a reminder, on November 11th, take the time out to remember those who fought for our freedoms, those who sacrificed their lives, and those who fought and came home. It's an important day for our community. So on November 11th, make sure you take time to pause and be thankful for what we have and for the sacrifices that others have made. So today we have a, an exciting show because we're going to be talking about our community and those who are living in our community that are retired, they're enjoying all the things that make up St. Catharines, Niagara, but it's about age-friendly communities and making sure that what we're doing here at City Hall and within the city is aligned with where a lot of the older adults are looking for increase in services, they want to make sure that it's age-friendly, and they want to make sure that they're still a part of our community. And an individual joining us is very familiar to the folks at home on Your TV Niagara, because it's changed brand, <laughs> so I had to look at my coffee cup. Your TV Niagara, it's John Storm, and John has been on, on Your TV Niagara and Kojiko previously with Taking Niagara by Storm, I, I believe it's 11 years, John? Yes, 11. And a lot of folks, if you want to know what's going on in Niagara, you tune into John's show. He's, he's a, a great host who brings a lot of different ideas to the table. And, you know, he challenges us, challenges Niagarans on, on how we should be thinking about our community. And John is also on the board of the Council for TV, TV Ontario. Mm -hmm and as well has spent nine years as a representative for the Ontario Trillium Foundation, and he teaches at the School of Philosophy here in St. Catharines. And yes, he is retired. And our, <laughs> John and I have had a history in, in business. When I was with the Chamber, John was with a very successful business in the community, Oxford Learning, and he uh, uh, an established entrepreneur. But now, like a lot of folks who enter into retirement, they look to get involved in other aspects of the community. He's also on, he's also been on the board of the Niagara Workforce Planning Board, of which he chaired, the Niagara Industry and Education Technology Board. And he's, if you, if you know John, he's involved in a lot of different things. So one of the organizations that he's taken an active role in is CARP. Mm -hmm. And CARP stands for Canadian Association for Retired Persons? Yes, exactly. Look at this. I've got it. There you that got it. Good. It's yeah, not the fish. Good stuff. We're not a fishing show. We're not talking <laughs> about fish. We're talking about carp. Yes. So your role in carp, you're on the board? I'm on the board. And tell us a bit about CARP because it is a very influential organization, not just in Niagara, but in Canada. Exactly. In, in, in Niagara, we've got almost 6,000 members. Mm -hmm. It's one of the biggest chapters in the country, about 31 chapters in the country. 300,000 members. Uh, across the country and when you get that number it's a very big lobby group I'll tell you a few months ago when the federal government wanted to raise the retirement age from 65 to 67 CARP visited Ottawa and then with that lobby power the politicians in Ottawa said let's keep it at 65 they don't want to anger the members of CARP because seniors today are different than 50 years ago they're active, they're w better educated, um, they're connected, and some of them have a lot of money and political power. Right. And so the, the governments don't want to anger CARP. So <laughs> advocacy is one of the functions of CARP. Yep. And, and we talk to the MPs and MPPs, um, and, uh, but it's also a social thing. Some of these seniors come out to our monthly meetings, which are on the th third Thursday of the month, at Anchor Point in St. Catharines, uh, you spoke there. I was just going to say I had an opportunity to speak there, and it was it was a it was a great diverse group of yes. of people from different parts of Niagara, and got to talk to them about what we're doing here in the city of St. Catharines. And I got to tell you, John, it was the Q and A that really opened up the the dialogue yeah. with. Okay, here's what we're working on. Oh, I didn't think I, w I didn't think about that. And I think that's the important thing that we want to talk about today is. Mm -hmm is that the voice of the, the older adult and how that voice is important in shaping policy yes. and in shaping community. Well, the members of CARP, by and large, they vote. 
as you know, younger people often don't vote in, in elections. These people pay attention to politics and they know a lot of politicians. A lot of people came up to you when you spoke at CARP because they, they want to know the mayor. Yep. And it's just a good organization. And, you know, we, I bring in speakers. Uh, I, we talked about age friendliness a month ago. Next month we're talking about dementia. Yep. Which is a big one. It's, it's, well, the guy who's coming, he, said, he refers to it as the tsunami of dementia coming, and we're not ready for it. No. But we also talk about what's in the community, and we engage with the community. There are many older groups around the region. CARP transcends all those groups. So I have fun with it. They have fun with it. <laughs> And I think the city, the city is doing a lot of very good things for older adults. Well, so tell me, before we get into some of the, 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 the sort of directions that we're going, what are some of the issues facing? What are you hearing? So this is interesting because a lot of folks at home, uh, they may be members of CARP. Uh, they, they, they understand maybe some of the issues. But what are you hearing that are some of the pressing issues for retired adults today? Well, income security is one. Uh, some of us, uh, you know, we're, we're financially very stable. Others are not so stable. We also have to care about seniors who are not financially stable. Correct. We have to speak for them as well. We also um, pay a lot of attention to, to the medical side. A lot of the budget of the Niagara Health System is dedicated to older adults. Right. But now, a lot of older adults are in great shape. You're in, I'm in good shape. You're in good shape you know, but there are others who really need help. Right. And the governments listen to CARP. So when you say about, about getting help, if, if I'm a member of CARP, is, is, is it through email? Like, g give the, yeah, give if, the viewers an idea of what they expect through a membership of if CARP. If you're a member of CARP and it's at 1995 to join or another $10 to get a magazine, but if you come to the meeting to get a magazine anyway, um, you get, uh, you get the advocacy across the country. You also get discounts. Discounts for insurance, discounts for your cell phone, discounts for travel. Uh, I, I want to tell people, if you're 60 years old, you can get free banking anywhere in Niagara. Really? Free banking. Yes. Really? Okay. Yes. <laughs> so you just go in and say, I'm 65? 60. 60? 60. 60, yeah. And just walk to in and go, oh, here's, my, here's my card, I'm 60, I want free banking. Exactly. Bank. And that's what I have in my wife. Okay. And um, to join CARP, because people, are, some people are retiring early, you, the minimum age is 45. I won't be retiring at 45. No. I am 45. Yeah. I'm not retiring. <laughs> I don't see retirement on my horizon for a long time. Well, no, not at all. But you can be a member of CARP still. Really? At 45. And okay. you get the discounts. And we did, you know, last year we did a big uh, show. We brought uh, hundreds of people to Shaw to see a play at yep. discounts. Yep. So the discounts apply to some people, uh, not so much to me, but um, I, what I want for CARP is to connect with people right. and to bring speakers in so the older adults can learn about what Niagara has. Right. Niagara has so many things that many people don't know about. Right. You talk about them on your show, I talk about it on my show. Yep. So in terms of that part of it, as a local chapter, how involved does the local chapter get on the policy side or influencing government on policies? Yeah, so give us some ideas. We have the do. national office in Toronto. Yep. They, they tend to do the lobbying, but they ask us, what do you want to talk about this year? What are the issues? Healthcare, is it safety? Is it medical devices? Is it insurance? What, how will OHIP change when I retire? So the national office does the lobby, okay. and they know all the politicians across the country. So the local chapter, though, do you get involved in the, we've got a provincial election coming up next year. We have a municipal election coming up. So what role do you envision CARP playing during those, well, I, I think, fundamental and transformative periods every four years? What role does CARP play there? They won't take a political position. They won't support any one party, but they will broadcast where the all candidates meetings are because they're involved with voting. Yeah. And they do care about the outcome of the election. And I think that the politicians, they all want to speak to CARP because right. they know that they know other people. Right. So they, they provide that role. 
Um, I think that if there is something, let's say, with the LIN mm -hmm. and the Niagara Health System, right. CARP can look at that and make a presentation to the LIN or the NHS. And do you, does, does through the email newsletters that you put out, do you, do you talk about the issues? Mm -hmm. Not in a I'm taking a side kind of way, but right. do you highlight the issue yeah. so that there, people can be more informed? The email that the president puts out is very long. He talks about what grants are available for seniors today, uh, what's happening politically, um, what's happening socially, uh, what's happening with the, the chapter itself. And we're getting so many new members coming in because of that. Okay, so what I'm going to ask you is, is just in terms of what do you see as the top three issues facing older adults here in Niagara? And I'm specifically, if you want to talk St. Catharines, but I think the issues are, are relatively the same around yes. the region. So it's three the issues. First, the first is probably just income security. And that, that could be what's the new tax level. Okay. You know, the other is medical security. And I think the other, frankly, is just community, uh, pro providing a sense of community for the seniors to connect with other age groups in the region. We're all in this together. Right, right. So when you talk about medical security, is that access to, to the services or is that the affordability? What do you, what do it, you mean by that? It's both. Uh, for some people who live, say, in Fort Erie and they have to go to St. Catharines, that's a fair drive. So, so it's we, interesting because that's where we could talk about intermunicipal transit. Well, yeah, we need the intermunicipal transit, okay. but it's got to be efficient. Yes, it's got to be very efficient. We have to build efficient. a system that gets someone from Fort Erie to Niagara Falls or St. Catharines not in five hours on a bus, but in hopefully an hour or under. I know that's and great that's, to do that, and that's so I think that's where the voice of of CARP becomes an important at the local level, an important voice to say intermissible transit or looking at affordable housing. So when you, it's, and I think this is where a lot of folks were, were, were connecting the dots is the affordability of housing mm -hmm. is an important area for us to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. The intermissible transit, the, the mobility, because once you get to a certain age, you may not be comfortable driving in the wintertime. You may not be comfortable driving yeah, at Or night. even when go comes. Right. I haven't driven to Toronto in years. Right. So the accessibility <laughs> of getting to another place to go see family and friends and, mm -hmm. and enjoy something. So. That's the, and I think that's where, when you look at financial or medical or community, mm -hmm. those are all interrelated and interwoven into how do we design our policies that take into Yes, into, exactly. Into and for things like age-friendly notions, when we build parks, let's build benches with armrests. So yeah. some people have trouble getting up from See, a bench like that. That is... That is one of those aha moments, and we're just, we're just going to wrap up, but one of the aha moments is something as simple as putting an armrest on a bench helps to create a better age-friendly community. Exactly. And John, I, I just want to say I want to thank you for the work that you're doing at CARP and for also keeping us informed here in Niagara through your show and for being involved because I, I think one of the messages that we can take away today is that in, in terms of being retired and an older adult, or, uh, older adult in our community, John is a great example of staying active, being active, being a part of community, and help being the voice of older adults. So get involved through CARP. They're a great organization. You can look them up online, as well as get out into the community. We have an older adults forum that's coming up on, on November 22nd, and that's going to be an opportunity to learn more about CARP as well. So. Until after the break, because after the break we have Laurie Mambella coming to our show and she works for the City of St. Catharines and she'll be talking about some of the programs that we have for older adults here in St. Catharines. So come back after the break and then until we see you again on Taking Niagara by Storm. Right. Thanks for coming on. Joe. Pleasure. On thanks very much, Walter. Appreciate it. Okay. Hi and welcome back to our home with Mayor Senzik where we're talking about older adults and organizations like CARP that are a vehicle for older adults to learn more about what's going on in our country, in our province, in our cities. We have a very active chapter here in Niagara with close to 3,000 members. So it is a, a grow, actually 6,000 members, sorry, it's a growing organization here in Niagara. And at the City of St. Catharines, we do have a strong lens that we put on 
programming designed for older adults. And one of the leaders at the city that's very active in, in this is Lori Mombella. And Lori's career, she's started in sport. Uh, she represented our country at the highest level in rhythmic gymnastics for five years. And she was a re recipient of the Ontario Achievement Award for Excellent in Sports. She is currently the manager of programs and cultural services and her resume includes employment at the former Ontario Sports Centre, City of Barrie, the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Ontario, and the general manager of the 2012 Ontario Winter Games, which leads me to believe that Laurie will be involved in the 2021 Canada Summer Games coming to Niagara. I hope you're going to be a, a resource that we'll be able to tap into because that is going to be a transformational event, much like the Ontario Winter Games was in 2012. So, Laurie, I think you've been on the show before, and if nope, not... Nope, this is my first time. Okay, I was, I was going to say, if not, I, this is because we've seen each other around at different <laughs> events that we've been at together, and mm -hmm. you're also on the steering committee for the Healthy Kids Community Challenge for the Niagara Region, and you're a member of the Board of Directors for Parks and Recreation Ontario. That, that's a lot of work you do. It's great work to do. It's very rewarding, and I enjoy every moment of it. <laughs> that's... That's fantastic. So it's great to have you as part of our, our staff at the city and you're involved in a number of the programming that is designed around older adults and the city recently received an age-friendly designation which I'm very proud of because the staff worked mm -hmm. really hard to get that designation. What does it mean? The age-friendly designation actually comes from the World Health Organization and their goal is to have an age-friendly world. And so when you think about some third world countries, for example, that are really far from even having a life expectancy to the age that we would consider senior, we take a lot of supports for granted in our country that are already in existence. But the World Health Organization challenged us to dig a little bit deeper. So not just what is our country doing or our province, but what are we as a community doing to put into supports and services for our aging demographic. And a great example of where we really thrived in our application was accessibility. So we have a very dynamic accessibility committee at the city. Yes, they're changing policy, they're ensuring that we are meeting legislative requirements, they're lobbying government on our behalf, but the city itself is also putting its money where its mouth is. And we are investing dollars, significant monies into retrofitting and upgrading our facilities to meet new accessibility standards for older adults, but not just our facilities, but our outdoor spaces as well. So items such as more benches along our park trails, uh, longer intersection times for walkways, all those things make the environment built and otherwise more accessible for our older adults. And that's why we were successful and we look forward to continuing to renewal, renew our designation on a regular basis so that we can maintain those standards. And that's important. And I think two of the facilities that have been recently built in the past number of years, the Meridian Centre and the First Ontario, they were very much influenced around the age-friendly designation and, and the Accessibility Act and making sure that they are, they are actually now seen as the high, high watermark for what communities can do to make facilities age-friendly and accessible. Absolutely. It's one thing to say that we should do it, but this designation is actually a recognition of the fact we are doing it. Right. And that's why it's important to St. Catharines that we have this designation because it really puts an approval, a stamp of approval on the work that we're doing. Well, that's wonderful. It's, it's really a validation. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we can market too. And, and as much as the designation is, is an is an, is a is an example or a validation of the work that's being done. It's also a tool to attract people to the community to say, hey, we're investing in creating a inclusive community that people can move about in and it's age friendly. So I applaud you for the work you're doing there. And I know you've got a great team that's continuing to do the age friendly work. I also want you to give us a overview because I think a lot of folks at home they, they may not be aware of the amount of programs that we provide designed for older adults. Well, there's about 950 older what? adults that are aware because that's how many members we have currently. I thought you were going to say there was 940 programs. <laughs> okay, wow, that is a lot. 950 members okay. uh, who already know, but there's still room for many others to join. Right. So 
basically we have three dedicated older adult centers where we have exclusive programming for seniors, and I'll use those terms interchangeably if it's okay, seniors and older adults. And then we also have community centers and other recreation facilities which also offer periodic types of recreation programming. And if I was to put them into three general categories, the first category would be active programming for those older adults that still are concerned about their physical fitness levels and still want to be very physically active. So we offer programs such as pickleball and table tennis, Nordic pole walking. Now you don't play with a pickle and pickleball, do you? No, it's not a real pickle. But it's a lot of fun, and it's one of the fastest growing sports in the older adult demographic. Okay, there's people at home might be going, oh, pickleball? Explain what pickleball is. Pickleball is a racket sport, mm -hmm. but it uses paddles that are similar to uh, ping pong or yeah. table tennis, and it uses a larger wiffle ball. Okay. So it's a lot easier to be able, and it just you just push it back and forth over the net, and it's great exercise and great. a lot of fun. And so that you can do that at the Dunlop Senior Center? Yeah, you can do it at Dunlop. We offer it at Harriet Tubman Public School, and we also offer it at the Port Weller Community Center. Well, so there's three places now that have pickleball. Yeah. Okay, very good. Now, other programs, the aquatics program, we have... Mm -hmm areas for older adults? As well, yeah. So um, in addition to the active programming, we also have some passive programming. Okay. So for those who might have some physical limitations or just don't feel like working out that day, we have programs where you don't need as high of an exertion level. So things like painting classes, darts, scrabble, bingo, quilting. We offer woodworking. Uh, there's a really a wide variety of programs to sample. And then the third category would be social programs and special events. So we offer weekly tea dances, mm -hmm. dinner dances, there's uh, euchre tournaments, card tournaments, and holiday luncheons. The way for people to access these programs is to buy a membership. Okay. And a membership costs about $53. And if you join halfway through the year, we'll prorate that, that fee for you. Most of the programs are included in that membership. However, there are a few that there's an extra $2 drop-in fee. So where we have volunteer conveners, we don't add any extra charges. However, if we do have to pay a certified fitness instructor to lead um, a very popular eccentrics program, which is considered a fitness class for aging backwards, <laughs> then we do pay the instructor. They're a certified professional, and so there's a $2 drop-in fee for that. But we don't want financial barriers right. to be an obstacle for older adults, especially those that are living on a fixed income. So the city has a FAIR program, and FAIR okay. is an acronym. It's Fee Assistance and Recreation. Great. If you qualify, then we will reduce all of those fees by at least 50%. Wow. That's, that's part of that Compassionate City program that we're working on as well, as well where mm -hmm. we want to make sure everyone's included in the community. And, and finances shouldn't be a barrier to being able to participate in programs. So I'm, I'm glad that the city has embarked on, on that. And it's, it's, it's something that, as a community, if you need more information about it, just simply get in contact with the city and they'll put you in touch with someone. Now, we also have a couple of grants that you've been successful in applying for. And in 2017, the Seniors Community Grant, we got an, awarded a fund for a project called Silver Lens. Can you tell me a bit about that? Just quickly, that's a, uh, a seniors-centric video project. We're going to create, seniors are going to create a video for other seniors, and it is going to demonstrate why the city of St. Catharines is the best place in North America for older adults to live and to play. Right. So there will be a little bit of a spin and a, a focus on recreational opportunities, Wonderful. but we wanted it to be all-encompassing and showcase our entire city for all of the different departments in our city and what we offer. Oh, that's it. So when's that going to be finished production? We're hoping to have it all wrapped up by March 2018. And then will it be, how, how will people be able to see it? We'll be screening it at our Moonlight Movies and oh, some wonderful. of our other um, outdoor attractions where we have the large jumbo screens, so yeah. everyone will be able to watch it. That's amazing. Maybe we'll get it at the Meridian Center screen too. That'd be Absolutely. great to have it there before <laughs> Ice Dogs games. Now, there's another program that the city has been involved with, and that's the Parks and Recreation Ontario Hi-Fi Acting Aging mm -hmm. Program. It's a lot of words. 
what does it mean for St. Catharines? Because I'm to understand this could be the first of its kind here in Ontario. That's right. So for the last 15 plus years, Parks and Recreation Ontario has been a leader and has developed and implemented a quality control program for children's recreation programs. Right. So principles of healthy, active development for children and something called Quest 2. So we actually give a report card on our programming. They finally have come around now to the point where we're going to be implementing a pilot project which would be healthy, active aging and that will be training for all of the instructors and volunteers who currently lead older adult programming in the city. Okay. And we are, have, we've been requested, we've been designated as one of the pilot sites. We will be one of the first in Ontario. Uh, in two weeks I'll be going for some specialty training at their office in Toronto to get more information. But we're really excited about rolling it out. And St. Catharines was chosen as one of the pilot sites because of our very dynamic older adult centers and the fact that we have such an active program already. That's amazing. Looking forward to hearing more about that as it comes to life. And so there's a special event coming up. we got about a minute left on uh, November 22nd. It's the second annual? Third, Third annual. annual. Older Adults Forum. And just briefly tell us what it's about. Yeah, Wednesday, November the 22nd. It's from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. Free of charge. There's no need to pre-register or RSVP. Uh, at the Dunlop Senior Center? We've had to move the location. Originally, we thought we were going to host it at St. Catharines yep. Kiwanis Aquatic Center. We're expecting record crowds, so we've moved it to a larger location. Uh, it's an opportunity to have some face time with yep. yourself, with the mayor, to hear and about the staff. state of the city and, and the city. Yep. And then we are going to be looking at breaking out into some focus groups and getting some feedback and engagement on how we are moving forward with city budget, with transportation, with our programming in Parks and Rec, and other major topics that were outlined in our older adult plan. Well, we're looking forward to November 22nd. It's always an opportunity mm -hmm. to hear from the community and specifically from older adults in our community about where they see us going and how they can have an impact on with the kind of policies and regulations and programs that we're, we're putting into place. So, Lori, I want to thank you for your leadership at the city. You can see that we're not just trying to be a community that's following the pack. We're actually a community that's leading the pack. And I'm proud to say that we've got a great staff. They're applying for innovative programming. And so you're going to see a lot of different things coming up, uh, coming up in, in St. Catherine. So I want to see you out there those older adults who can make it out on the 22nd of November. If not, feel free to give us a call at the mayor's office at the city of St. Catharines and let us know what you think about what we can do to make this city an even more amazing place than it is today. So I hope you have a wonderful November and look forward to seeing you out and about in all the different events that are taking place. But until the next show, take care of yourself, look after one another and make sure that every day is a great day. Thank you very much for tuning in. See you until the next time.